Hey everyone, quick layout update here. I've been doing some testing of some of my locomotives going through them and converting DCC sound and getting them run pretty well. Uh, I've been talking about that in some other videos. But the issue is, is I, when I've been testing them on my layout here, that you know I haven't done much with again for a while, uh, when these locomotives would come right through this switch, right at the frog, you know, they would die. What was actually happening is that there was a short here. So I dug into this, you know, I dug into this a little bit. You know, first thing was I, I checked the locomotive. I made sure that the wheels were, you know, proper dimensions based on, you know, standards with your little testing tool and stuff like that. And it was all good there. And I tested the, you know, the track too, make sure the switch was okay. And, you know, on the flangeways and everything was fine. But it was still happening. So digging in a little bit more, I could actually make it not happen simply by holding, you know, putting some pressure on the locomotive one way or the other. So if I had pushed it away, it would go over just fine. But if I pulled it toward me, it would short right at that frog every single time. So the switches I'm using, at least here, I've just got a couple of these. Um, I've actually got a bunch of these. I bought these like 10 years ago. Uh, these are the Atlas uh, Code 83, the, the snap track, as they call them. So snap 83 left is this one here. I've got a bunch of right-hand ones, too. And, you know, these are the switches I was planning on using, you know, throughout my yard and stuff like that in the back. And most of them are a little bit further away, so I didn't need, you know, super high-quality, high-end switches. But... It's having me rethink that. And the reason is because looking at these switches, you know, they have a completely insulated frog in the middle here. You know, compared to some of your, you know, nicer Atlas switches that have the hot frog, uh, which is fully insulated from all rails, you know, but you could tie it, you know, it's got the solder point there to tie it to, you know, your, your remote turnout or your turnout, you know, to power this if you want it to. Um, but it is fully insulated. So, while, while still being metal. But on the snap ones, it's, it's plastic. You know, but it's really short, so it's you know it's not really a concern of, of it you know, not being conductive there, and it's never been a problem. But the issue I'm running into is that just on the way that these are made, on the flangeways, so you know using the tool, checking through there, you know it clears just fine. There's no issues. It's all in spec. But the problem is, is that it, you know as, as I demoed on the on the layout there, if I hold it to right now, I'm, I'm forcing it to the right. You know it it goes through, except for right here. So right at this point here, it actually comes in contact with that rail. So this wheel is moving along conductive, you know, on this rail here, and it's conducting the rail that's actually on the opposite side, you know, for your right wheel. Let's zoom left and right right here. It's hitting that, and that's what's causing the short. So if you notice that, you know, it they cut in really close. You know, they could have brought this a little bit further out with more insulation, so that didn't happen. But that's what I'm seeing happening on these switches. So, you know, there's really no fix for that. I searched online real quick. Some people said that, you know, they put paint and there's something on there just so it doesn't, you know, contact that point right there, you know, which is fine, but that's not going to last forever. And especially if I'm using these switches all through my layout, you know, I don't, it's just, you know, track issues are one thing you don't want to deal with. So I don't think I'm going to use these, unfortunately, which is sad because, you know, like I guess I mentioned, I, I bought these like 10 years ago. I've, I've got like 10 of them or something like that. Um, you know, mostly for the yard. I've got a little bit better high-end switches on the front here um, with hot frogs for, you know, the upper closer main lines and stuff like that. But unfortunately, um, I think I made the decision I'm not going to use these. So I'm going to have to start looking for other switches. I know that this series of Atherin, or I'm sorry, this series of uh, Atlas has been better. Still Code 83, the custom line, I believe it is. So, I don't know. There's Pico switches, there's other brands too. I'll, microengineering, I'll have to look into it to figure out what I'm doing. It's just unfortunate because switches are expensive. So, um, now that I've been redesigning my yard anyway, I've been trying to cut down the amount of track there. So, that will help in terms of the number of switches I have to buy. But, it will probably still only be in a couple hundred dollars in switches I'll need to get to replace these. Luckily, I've only got a couple that I'm using here that, that I'll need to remove, um, which won't be too big of a deal. But, I don't know, it's still annoying. So, I just wanted to point that out. I'm curious if anybody else has come across that issue with the with the Atlas snap track. So it's just disappointing. But anyway, just quick layout update on that. I thought I'd make a video just because uh, I found that odd, to say the least. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching.